So ground bait in shallow water. I mean, definitely, definitely not a new method, but when it comes to fishing from as soon as the water warms up, some point in April until probably around October time, there is no better method for catching lots and lots of fish in the shallow water, be it in margins or the far bank or snake lakes. But however, it's very much looked upon feeding ground bait as sort of an edge thing. I mean, be it open water, whatever, it's uh, a late in the match, feeding lots of bait, drawing them in. And I definitely don't think at many, many, many venues, it shouldn't just be looked at in that way. I mean, venues I go to, such as uh, Tunnel Barn in particular, Parts is a massive one for it. Um, the fishing of a mud line, as they sort of call it, which is, say, replicated either on the far bank or down the edge, can be a lovely way of catching for a, a pretty much an entire session if them fish are willing to come into that shallow water. But what there are definitely is quite a few different ways of doing things with the bait that you're feeding, with your hook baits as well, to make sure you're getting the absolute most of it. And you need to, what am I going to say, manipulate your feed sort of to be correct for how the fish are entering your peg and how your peg might be in the first place. I mean, mud lines can be quite a tricky area to target because they can be a little bit higgledy piggledy the way they plumb up. There can be random obstacles all over the way that stop you from getting to where you want to get and that's what i'm going to go through today i want to go through quite a few little things starting on bait leading up to the actual fishing itself and just going through everything for me that makes mudline fishing just a lovely way of fishing but not as basic as you think where you just cup a big pot of ground bait cup a big pot of ground bait in fish over it catch a load of carp it's it's not like that anymore. I mean, you have to feel your way in to make sure you can literally on some days use it from the start of the session to the very, very end and sort of change your feeding accordingly as you go. So that's what I want to go on to first, not feeding, but the baits that we feed. And it's a lovely, really cheap, simple option of fishing. I mean, you literally rock up with a handful of selective hook baits. I'm not going to go into them too much. They can be whatever you want. There's no limit on the hook bait you put on it. For me, I've got corner maggots. They're normally my go-to. But for bait itself, what I'm actually going to feed every single cast or most casts is literally either micros, ground bait, or a combination of both. Yeah, and they're all mixed in slightly different ways depending what I'm going to try and create. So for today, we're here for a nice quick session up at the old huff on Goose Pool, which is perfect for it. I've got a lovely shallow mud hole here that we're going to have a little play with later. And I've mixed my bait up just before I've left this morning. And all I've mixed up for potentially fishing for four or five hours today is half a bag of Fin Perfect Micros. Yeah, so it's took absolutely nothing whatsoever. I've already stolen half of them, three quarters of them, um, for my other mixes. But I've softened them up before I've left, just putting them in the tub, just covering, covering them in water. They end up with a lovely, fluffy, well-soaked pellet. That's how I want them for this. I mean, I don't want crunchy pellets. I want them as soft as they can possibly be. So they are done, ready to go. And I've also mixed up one bag. No, I haven't. I've mixed up half a bag uh, of F1 Original. Absolutely tons. I mean, half a bag obviously is a kilo pretty much. Excuse me. Which gives me a massive amount of ground bait. I mean, I've got, what have I got there? Two, four, six pints of it there and half a bucket full still. Loads and loads of bait for, I mean, they last me for five or six hours. A massive amount of bait prepared for the session but gives me options as well. So what I've got it mixed, I've got it mixed in a bucket, I've just put it through a riddle, I've mixed it in the same way that I always do, in that I cover it in water, make it nearly a slop, and I leave it. And then what I've got here on my peg this morning, I've pushed it through a riddle just to create this lovely fine, I mean, damp mix. It's not heavy, it's not really overwetted. To begin with, it's just a nice damp, fluffy mix that I can make into a ball if I want, but as you can see, lovely, lovely, fluffy mix. So, and the reason I've chosen F1 Original as well is that mainly because Jake has put me onto it this year and got me away from the Super Crush Expander that I was obsessed with. I definitely found that Super Crush Expander, brilliant for when I want it to attract and fluff about and all those things, especially for my silverfish fishing. Now that the fish are a bit more, what were we going to say? They're a bit more active. They're a bit more boisterous in the peg. I want something that stays on the bottom a bit better and just crushed expander on its own can be a bit fluffy, a bit too light. And I wasn't like achieving the right sort of piles that I was trying to do with it. So instead by swapping to F1 Original, which has become very much my new favorite summer mix for carp and F1s, I can get slightly heavier, slightly stickier mix potentially that's gonna stay on the bottom a little bit better. Not quite as fluffy as pure expander on its own. So that's there, ready to go, that's my base. And what I'm gonna use that for is my attraction make me nice fluffy mix on its own, how that could potentially work is, I could put a pile of that in, 
with a loose part in a clump, however, put that in my peg, it's going to be very, very, very attractive to fish because it's got all them bits all over the place. But in the way it is now, it's not going to stay in place very well. Yeah, so it can be great for getting fish into your peg to start with, but not sort of building up too much on the bottom. It gets dispersed really, 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 really quickly. So there's a good chance I might start my session with that to see what's going on. I can also use this whenever I need to, to big pot potentially later on, to put lots of little particles all in my peg, but no actual concentration of a clump of bait, which can be great if the fish are in those moods where they're coming in for brief periods and leaving your peg really quickly, then using a mix in that sort of case, really fluffy, still heavy enough to sink obviously, but not, not as dense so it sits in a clump on the bottom. That can be a great way of getting fish into the peg if I don't want to overfeed my peg. However, as I say, it does have the, the downfall, if you like, of not creating a, a good target. That's the one. I mean, it doesn't stay as sexy on the bottom. There's not much of a clump on the bottom for me to sort of focus my fishing over because it gets dispersed so easily. So in that case, I want to slop it up, yeah, which I could do on its own if I wanted. I could make it much, 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 much heavier. Potentially, if I just wanted to feed ground bait, I've not actually done just ground bait today. But what I could do is slop it up and make a really, really sloppy mix. Yeah, this case has got some micros in, but ignore that for now. And you can imagine when that goes in, it stays a lot denser. I mean, it gives me a much more fixed target sort of thing to fish over that then fish are going to come in and nail. However, and the flip side to the fluffy stuff, that does stay in place. It does build up a little bit more. You can imagine if the fish don't eat it all, I mean, it's often staying in your peg, so it can be great again if there's lots of fish visiting my peg. So that's what I'm going to do if there's loads of fish coming, if I'm catching really well. Often later in the session, I find that works good. But so every day is different. I'm going to talk about this when we actually fish and tell you what I'm seeing on the day. I don't know how it'll be today. So that's the, the ground bait side of things done. So I've also got the element of my pellet. I mean, often the fish want something to eat. I mean, pellets can be brilliant, not so much on their own, because again they'd have that very uh, fluffy wafty aboutness if I was to just feed them like that so I may potentially feed some pellets with my ground bait which is what I've done today I've got pellets and uh, ground bait done fluffy wise so they're literally softened pellets with the fluffy ground bait put over the top of them and that gets me a nice mix that it stays in place a little bit better than the fluffy stuff does yeah fluffy ground bait on its own is going to disperse this is going to leave some micros behind when it breaks down so it gives a bit of particles, a bit of food content for the fish to actually eat that holds in place great, but not so much as the sloppy stuff potentially could. So it's giving myself a little few options that yes, it is a little bit too in depth potentially, but it's all about catching as many as I can. I mean, if it catches me three or four more fish, prolongs the life of my peg a little bit longer by using whatever mix I need to, depending what those things are doing out there, then it's all good for me. I mean, two or three fish is all it takes to win so many more, so many matches, so much of the time. So really, really simply, as you can say, I've got my bait there. It looks like I've done lots, but I've got many, many, many options to keep it nice and versatile with what I'm doing with me fishing wise. So bait done, all good to go. I'm not gonna feed anything. I'm gonna come onto the fishing very last. I'm gonna quick chat about rigs. Not too much in depth with this one, but Rigs, very, very, very simple, very popular, very standard way of fishing mud lines. And the rig I've set up is one of our standard muddy floats. I mean, it's got a two mil bristle, nice, buoyant, heavy float. I mean, short, heavy floats. When fishing, what depth are we gonna say? Potentially eight inch, eight inch to 22 inch, 25 inch at a push. That nice shallow block of water that we're looking at, we want stable, proper floats that sit there don't get wafted about because you can imagine you've got such a small area you've got sort of a fish tank of water that you're fishing in in that mud hole it's a lot of water movement if I get multiple fish in my peg so I need a rig that's going to be very very stable stay there not show up too many liners or keeping things exactly where I need it to be so we've seen these floats in many many different forms but a muddy float so in today's case a point four is pretty much perfect and shot in couldn't get more simple yeah literally in today's case I've got about 18 inch and I've literally got a three inch hook length with a 16 hook because I'm going to fish maggots and just a block of number eight. Yeah, that's got the, what's that gone on? That's just got, oh, that's lost one, Jakey. That's got five number eights. Was that right or was it meant to have six? It's five's right. Six, it's lost one. One's fell off. I've just caught a fish, that's why. But anyway, a block of six number eights with a point four. A couple of fine tuning shots. 
keep things very, very simple, very positive, right over when I'm going to fish. However, on the flip side of that, what I also do like to do on many occasions, if I'm fishing more little fish venues, so it can be at partridge on certain pegs, tunnel barn very much in particular where there's not um, a huge stock of carp, it's very much 70% F1s, 30% carp. What I might do is swap my bristle a little bit. So in which case I'll use a diamond style float. You'd see with a much lighter bristle, in that case that's a 1.5 mil bristle. Still all the same, still a 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 heavy float, but just with a bit more finesse. So if I can swap to a 1.5 mil bristle, when it's a bit more delicate, when there's little fish in my bag, I'll often do that. And I just feel it gives me a little bit more of a, bit of a sensitive rig sort of thing. But not for today, we're gonna to catch great big wobbly ones with a, with a bit of luck. So I've got the standard 0.4, two mil bristle, really, really simple. A little tip I'd definitely give you as well when doing this is using a long length of line in between your float and your pole. It makes a huge difference. Those fish are already on edge sort of thing. I mean, they're in the shallowest water in your peg. They're not happy to be there often. They're sort of, they're quite spooky, quite, I mean, easily scared when they come into your peg. So by having a longer length of line with a nice big back shot on, so in that case, I've got what? Probably got 20 inch nearly. Big R length of line. I can still use my back shot to hold it nice and still where I want it to be, but my pole's well out the way. And on days, if my peg's right and it's not too much overgrown, I can actually get my pole away from the water. I can hold it over the bank if I need to while keeping that back shot in place, keeping my float where I need it to be. So little things like that, you'll see when we're fishing, make an absolutely huge difference when it comes to stability, staying over my pile and catching as much as I can in my peg. So with that, I think we're pretty much done. I think it's time to quickly get my suit on, whiz over there and show you how I'm gonna feed my peg just to kick things off and just to show you the certain things that I'm looking for as well when approaching certain areas of the hole. So, bait sorted, all ready to go, but before we catch any fishies, before it introduce any bait, obviously we need to see what's going on with the plummet. And what I've also done, so if you're allowed, if there's access there, it is massively worth whizzing around the far bank with your shears and your landing net and just making it a bit neater. It makes such a difference and improves your accuracy um, and what's the word, efficiency so much if you've not got to worry about a few little tentacles, a few little bits of grass sticking out making or hindering you putting your rig in the perfect position. I don't want that. I mean, if I can, I just want a minimal bit of a trim around it, make it all nice and pretty and neat, scoop it all out with my landing net. While I'm over there, if I'm allowed, have a little poke with my landing net as well. I mean, what that'll tell me is if there's any uh, undercuts, if there's any big obstacles, if there's anything in the way. Just a, such a quicker job than what my plummet does. I can find out what's there on the bottom. I can feel if there's any big stones, any roots. It just makes your job really, really quick and easy. And if you can, you can deal with it while you're over there. But today's case, it's all lovely clean, good to go. So what I've got is my rig set. Obviously, I've plumbed this up already. But I've got my rig set at the depth that I'm going to fish. And I'm just going to go and see what the contours are like over there. I knew it did. Look at the wind. Where's this wind come from? So, first thing I want to do is pick the place I want to fish within my mud hole. Yeah, I think that's very important. And today it's nice because you've sort of got both sides of it. Even though this is floating, this pontoon to the left-hand side, it's sort of a, a sticky out bit that I don't want to fish behind. Yeah, what I believe the fish do is they swim along that reed line. Like the right-hand side of my peg, as I look at it, it's nice flush reeds. So the fish haven't got to move far from that reed line into the hole. It's probably only a foot for them to move back. So you get a constant flow of fish. I mean, a lot more passing traffic, which is really important. Whereas if you've got a big step back like I have on this left-hand side, the fish have got to move a lot further. It's not on their natural, um, natural line that they're swimming to move into that bait. So that it can be a little bit difficult to get them into that shallow water and they're not just falling and um, stumbling across it by accident. So you can see this side, I've got it nice and shallow there. It's actually a little bit shallow on the left-hand side. But where I want to fish today is over here. And there's quite a few things that are dictating that that's where I want to fish. Yeah, firstly, because I say it's closer to that deeper water, to that drop off, which is occurring about here. See where it drops down into this deeper water? And it's close to that weed line. Yeah, secondly, it's in a corner. I mean, I like a subtle corner, not a real nasty cutback. It's a bit of a corner that I can contain my bait in as well. And I've had a little poke about with my landing net and it's not undercut. So in that little area there, 
I know I'm fishing in a lovely face sort of thing, up against the face that the fish can't get behind. It's gonna contain me bait a little bit because it's not in the middle of the peg where it's gonna waft about. So, and lastly, a massive thing for today especially is that it's in the shade. I mean, I'm gonna get an hour or so of shade there, probably a bit longer, maybe an hour and a half of shade, which trust me, makes a huge difference in them warm summer months. Fish love being in cover. So if I can fish in the shade, hopefully I'll get a few more bites than water would if I came out of it. So a bit of a bounce about, and here it's a lovely one. Yeah, I've got a lovely flat area there. There's no distinctive changes. I mean, maybe a mill or two. Comes a little bit shallow to the left-hand side here, but not nothing drastic. So I know if I'm tight to the bank there, you can see I'm plumbed up, bottom of the body. So I'm gonna be laying on middle of the body sort of thing. I'm gonna be laying an inch or so on, but that is absolutely perfect. And I'm tight to the back. Yeah, I can't get any further back than what I am. I'm right to the very, very back, pretty much touching the mud with my float. That's where I wanna be every time. Yeah, by fishing anywhere down here, if I come off it a little bit, so although I'm pretty much the same depth, it gives the fish an option of being behind my bait or being behind my float which is the last thing I want. I want them to stumble across that trap or to come in my peg from the left or the right. I mean, I'm expecting them to come in from the right, sneak in, almost not see them because the deeper water is so much closer than what it would be if I went to the left. And I just get lovely, nice, clean bites with less chance of them spooking because they've been in that peg for a prolonged period in that shallow water. Like I say, they're definitely on edge as soon as they go into that shallow water, so I don't want them doing that. Right, done. So I've just annoyed anything by plumbing up over the top of it. Oh, please don't fall off, please don't fall off. Oh, nearly lost him then. Right, we're good to go. So I'm gonna start off with maggots. Yeah, my go-to bait, catch anything pretty much to begin with. I'm not gonna feed any. Literally, I'm gonna impale two or three white maggots on the hook. Today's case, two will do. We've got great big fat Dave's and Middlewich maggots. They are all good to go. And I'm gonna start off by feeding me loose stuff. So I've got me loose, nice and wet, but loose ground bait to begin with. Yeah, and I'm not gonna go in with a big pot or anything like that. I'm just gonna go in and see what the fish are doing. Yeah, because what you find with the loose, I'm gonna make a bit of a clump of it. Clump it in that cup, he's good to go, beautiful. And to start with, I've got a medium cup on as well. I've got the option of going bigger if we need to. I could even go didier, but I never really do that, if I'm honest. It's always medium or large that I'm gonna feed. It's a perfectly ample amount of bait for this time of year. Let's get that lazy in. And yeah, by feeding me, what are we gonna call it? Me fluffy mix sort of thing to begin with. What it allows, it puts a bit of bait in me peg and tells me very quickly whether the fish are coming in or not. But it allows the mix to be dispersed really, really fast. So there's gonna be no build up of bait. So it's great for showing whether them fish are coming in. So I'm just gonna put that pot to the water, let it all come out. Does that come out? Beautiful. And I'll lift me float up, blonk him in. Gorgeous, trap set, good to go. And what I want to see now is how fast it's taking for them to fish to come in and whether they're willing in the first place. Oh, little in the kitchen then. So with having maggots on, I could easily catch some silvers or some little fish or anything at the time, but see, it's about learning to begin with. See, little diddy fish, last thing that we want. But I don't mind that because it means I can be fast. What is he? He's a tiny jakey. He's a bleak. He's not, he's a little rud. It's just looking bleak. But what that might dictate, if I start catching too many of them, I just need to swap my hook bait. But back in, another full pot. Yeah, because even with a little fish like that, wiggling about, it might move me ground bait a bit. Let's trim this, trim this elastic a little. But I'm happy going in all the time because I know how quick that bait will disappear because it is so light, so fluffy. It's not making a solid pile on the bottom. Yeah, it's just a bit of attraction, bit of cloud through the water and a little bit of a loose lump on the bottom as well that I'm fishing over. So I'm gonna put that in to begin with, just see what's happening. Yeah, I can keep on feeding this four, five, six times and not feel at all like I'm overwhelming the peg, putting any volume in the peg, there's no bait building up. And within that many casts, really quickly I'll know what's visiting me peg. I mean, if there's any fish actually worth catching, if there's any F1, if there's any carp coming in that quick, and hopefully if they are, then I can swap things about a bit. So just as I would with sort of skimmer fishing in the winter, I'm gonna use my loose fluffy mix as my attractor. That's great for putting an amount in, putting it in loose, putting loads of bait sort of in the peg attraction wise, but nothing 
sort of them from sweet. I mean, there's little bits of smell and stuff all over the place. That's a bit more of a, see I'm getting a liner then, a bit more substantial. I mean, that's not a little tiny fish, that's an F1 or a carp in me peg. And what I want to do, I've got me little two or three inch square that I've got me um, a bit of a marker on the far side, a little spot of mud that I'm fishing against. And my float has to be on that all the time. So with the big, heavy 0.4 float, load a shot on it, in turn that helps keep it stable, helps keep it over that pile. I mean, it's no good putting my pile in and fishing six inches away. I mean, them fish are going to come in, nail that pile, be gone and never even get near my hook bait. It has to be over the top of it. So that float being lovely and stable does exactly what I want it to do. I'm going to see what happens now. I'm not going to give it much longer. So fish have came in, I've had uh, indications, they've wafted it about. There's a good chance they've ate that and not at my hook bait. And definitely, definitely with how much my rig was moving, I'd suspect my baits moved very, very, very quickly. So what I'll do is give this 10 more seconds. If I don't get a bite, I'll whiz back in and I'll do it again. And I'm going to do that twice more, I'm going to say, because already I'm not feeling it. It's as if it came in, there wasn't enough bait on the bottom, it left my peg really quickly. Yeah, there's another one in my peg now. But because my bait isn't correct, it's not holding it where it needs to at this time with how they're coming in, that's why I'm not getting a nice clean bite. So I'm just going to do it once more. And we should get the same sort of result, like lots of wafting about and possibly not getting a bite. A little indication then, but still, no fish. But coming into my peg, my bait fell off. Two more maggots on. There might be some silvers there, but I don't think it is. There's been evidence of an odd proper fish coming into my peg quite quick. So yeah, once or twice more with loose. Go in, same again. So it's a, a decent bit of ground that you're feeding. When you look at it, I'm feeding that much. I Means a bit of bait going in. So put him in, just neaten it all off. I don't want it falling off on the way. Just squeeze the edges of my pot. That makes it fall out a little bit easier when I dunk it under the water. Yeah, what will I do? I'm going to give it one more go. Give it one more of these just to speed it up with the video. Let's see, because what I don't think now is my clump isn't staying and then fish are coming into my peg quite quick, which is great. So if they weren't coming into my peg or took a bit more bait though, then at least I had the bait on. Didn't dunk that for anywhere near long enough then. Get in. I'm not being rubbish. I'm going to sink it so the bottoms of the pot go in. There we go. He's in. Lift him up, see, see, straight in again, little indications wafting about. Pull that rig back to where we want it to be. Let's see what they do. So even then, as soon as the bait went in, it's wafting about, things are happening straight away. So then fish are really, really quick on the bait by the looks. Another indication, we've got a little diddy fish. So definitely, definitely, I want to swap. So what I'm going to swap first, before I swap me up, I thought he was a chub or something there, what is he? He's a little id. Oh, I like a little pretty id. They must have bred in here then, he's not stuck them. Lovely little ids. But, happy to catch that. Maggots, sound, but now I'm going to swap, because I don't feel like I've got enough bait going in my peg. And them little ones will go all over the place. So before I swap to my sloppy stuff, I'm going to swap to the same as what I'm feeding, the... the um, dry-ish ground bait, I mean normal fluffy ground bait, but with me micros in, to hopefully give them some bait on the bottom. I mean, those micros are going to stay behind, there's going to be something a bit more substantial for them to actually eat. While still attracting fish, because there's a bit of a cloud, bit of puffing up, and as I say, really, really important, disperse a bull, if that a word? I think, I've just created it if it's not, because I don't want my bait to keep building up in my peg. Put that in the wrong order then. I put my rig in first, which I shouldn't have done. The same again, get pot in, beautiful. Get rig over the top of it. Good to go. We'll see, now I've got a bit more bait in the peg. See how quick I'm getting an indication then. I don't know if I'm seeing things. I felt like there was a little bit of a bow wave on my peg then as well when I missed that bite. Which just as I would edge fishing, 
I need to keep on track of that pile I'm putting in. Yeah, if I feel that pile's gone, it's been upset because I've struck missed the bite and the fish has wafted it, come in, feed again. Yeah, if the trap isn't there for them to home in on, then it is very, very, very unlikely I'm going to get a bite anyway. So it is a busy method. You're not loose feeding or anything like that. It's all dictated by your pot, but you need to be in and out all the time replenishing that pile, just making sure there's something to draw the fish in in the first place. So if there's no bait there, there's no reason for them to go in. See, I've had a little window of activity this time. I cut my bait in, missed two bites. Yeah, and then it's gone quiet. Very, very likely they've eaten that already. But with it being three casts in, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt just for another 20 seconds or so. See if one comes in. If not, whiz back, feed again. So hopefully one will come in. So I've not seen any, visually seen any carp yet. So it's probably a tiny bit too deep. A little indication then. Tiny little bit too deep to be seeing any. That's my second little silver fish. Don't want to catch that. He's another little, he's a rud. He's a rude. But what I'm going to do now, a big carp down the edge there, is swap me up bait. Yeah, don't want to be coming back with little rud every go. Get rid of them. Time to put a piece of sweet corn on. And what corn does as well, so nice and selective, stops me catching as many little fish, but it's more weight as well. Corn's probably my favourite bait for fishing in the edge because of the weight it adds to your hook bait, keeps it where I want it. So same again, full pot. So a bit more of a selective hook bait on this time, shouldn't catch any rud. Might catch nothing whatsoever now, but let's see. comes in and say this is the nice sensible way just feeding with me little pot no big pots coming out just yet because I don't know what I'm catching I mean it's great yes we all want to catch a load of carp on this but carp often feed later on in the session so to begin with when I'm fishing for well, hopefully F1s with an odd straggler carp I only want to feed little amounts of bait I mean, great big pots ain't too good for F1s, very much so early in the session as well. So I don't want to be forcing my peg with a big pot, trying to get loads of fish in my peg immediately. I want to build it up. So by slowly putting that little pot in every single go, hopefully I keep the, the masses happy rather than sort of go for the jugular straight away with a load of bait. So you're going to see, I do feel like there's plenty of fish in peg. It's moving about and wiggling you see how much more stable that float is now with that piece of corn on that rig ain't budging it is absolutely perfect exactly where i want it to be just say it couldn't be any better that couldn't be any more stable we was a big and down the edge then so now i'm happy it just shows a lot of them indications before ah, i had a good one and i missed it a lot of them indications before were just little fish so if i swap in hook bait just gives you a better idea what's happening in my peg. I mean, before I was being misled sort of thing that there were more fish in my peg than there were because it was little fish giving me indications pecking at their maggots. If I swap into something a bit more selective, it showed me that there's possibly not any quality fish just yet coming in. And I fed their micros twice now. So the mix of the two is a bit of an indication. I'm going to feed them again next cast. Keep feeding some micros so I've got some bait going in the peg. Because definitely those little fish that if I hadn't started on maggots, you wouldn't even know they were in the swim. They'll just clear the little bits out anyway. I mean, probably most of the micros, definitely the little bits of ground bait, they're not even staying in the peg because there's a lot of little mouths that we sort of don't want, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, I like having some mouths in my peg just to clear it out, just to create attraction, if anything. So I don't mind that going on just yet. So hopefully, if I continue, a bigger fish is going to come into the swim. So already I've missed that bite on proper bite I had a minute ago. It could be that my pile's gone already, it is that quick. After doing that 
underwater thing that we did. Here we go, finally got a proper one. What's he doing? He's gone in the weed. Is he coming out? Stuck in a weed. He'll ping off here, he's only a little left one, I think. There we go, he's just on a little tentacle. But first, slight, oh, mate. Jake, he's a green one. That's it, we're going. He's done, isn't he? That's like the near, that might be my best fish in the world, even a green one. He's up there. But a start, first proper fish. Took a little bit longer than I thought. But first proper fish that's come into me peg, but I'm more than happy with that, especially a green one. Love a green one. So, same again, a little piece of corn. That's proven to be the, the one to go with. And I'm gonna feed these once more. And then next, I'm gonna to move to my sloppy ones just to see if that's any better. So maybe the wafting about, stopping the fish homing in as much on the bottom. Put me mix in, so I'm putting it in exactly the same place every single go. Yeah, the position where it goes in never differs. It's always building that focus point up all the time. That's where I want the fish homing in on to catch a fish. They're straight on it. As soon as I'm feeding, there's indications on my float. So they are whizzing into the bait. I just need something bigger to find out what's going on. Give it a bit of luck. We'll see what it might be. It's just that I need a, a bigger influx of bait. So I know there's plenty of fish there eating what's in there at the minute. It could be just swapping a size of pot. They could start bringing some bigger fish in. It feels like a carp's just coming in from the right-hand side now. So on that little reed line, just to the right, I've just seen a bit of a, a bit of a movement. And often you'll see that just before one enters the peg. So there's nothing more exciting than a tail popping up a foot away from your float and slowly making its way to your feed area and then you're getting a big Houdini bite. It's just so exciting, this mudline fishing, when then bigger fish start coming in and getting visually moving towards your bait. So as long as you've been really, what's the word, strict with yourself and you keep being accurate, keep putting that bait in exactly the same place all the time, so you know that as soon as it gets there, you're going to get a bite. So if I'm a little bit inaccurate, a bit lazy, a bit plopping my bait in, six inches here, off all the time, and really quickly you end up with a massive big feed area and they often won't get to your bait because they'll have ate something and spooked before they actually get to your, your little parcel. So you do have to be really strict with yourself. Be patient, make sure it goes in right every go. And it will lead to a few more once they start playing. I think I had a bite then, I wasn't looking. Did it go under JK and you were thinking, what's he doing? Don't know. Put him back in. So I like that cast more. It was the first cast I've not had indications off. But I actually like that because I felt that there wasn't any little tiny fish in my peg all of a sudden, which should mean that there was a, a proper one coming in. I do still think I'm fishing over my bait. That's what I'll do. I'll give it another minute or so, and if it doesn't move, I'll come put pile in again. You are non-stop topping that little pile up all the time. And if it comes to it, it can have a big pot to really start attracting fish into the peg, but we'll come into that in a minute. Right, what I'm going to do, just try and concentrate them, keep them where I want them, is swap to me sloppy, sloppy stuff. And with me sloppy stuff, I've been a bit weird with that one, in that I've had a load of water to it to make it sloppy, but then I've also had a little play adding a tiny bit of bait booster, because the bait booster is very glucose, very heavy and it just adds a bit more weight to it. All I want it to do is stay right where I want it. So a little dribble of bait booster as well makes my hand smell beautiful, but also make me bait a little bit claggy, which is only ever a good thing. So I'm gonna put that in, same amount of bait. You can imagine when that goes in, yeah, really stodgy, really accurate pile on the bottom. The downfall of this is, when a fish has a little go at it, it goes very, 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 very quickly. I mean, they eat that pile so quick because it's so condensed. As soon as one comes into the peg, gives it a quick suck, the lot is gone then. So hopefully now, by swapping to this, 
I'm going to really, really condense that feed, stop it wafting about at all to minimalise the cloud. So everything's just going to go straight down. When I put that bait in, you can see straight on my pot, straight to the bottom, very little cloud coming off it. I'm creating that little perfect method feedery cherry on top trap that now when a fish comes in, eats that bait, it'll suck in my corn pretty much by accident, which is coincidentally, that's why I like maggots so much. If I can get away with them, if there's not too many nuisance fish, then I believe that maggots, when presented over that pile, just as you would on a method feeder, they suck the absolute lot up, even by accident. So you sort of get two bites of the cherry in that they might eat your bait through choice or they might just suck it all up together. Because corn can be a little bit more, it doesn't go in as easy sort of thing when they suck it up. But it's staying lovely in position and I'm really happy at the minute that everything's how I want it to be. Only thing I'm not happy about is the lack of carp, but they'll be coming. So it is a way of fishing that isn't instant for catching the biggest fish, unless it's a special day and they're straight on it. It's often a case of just building that peg slowly, slowly, slowly. You might catch two or three fish first hour, five or six at second hour, and it just builds that way before the last hour. It can be absolutely solid. But you've ticked over all day putting fish in the net fishing in potentially on days like this when it's really warm, really, really high pressure in the only area you peg that you're going to catch fish. And they all want to be in that shallowest water as close as possible to cover. It's the only way of doing things to keep ticking over throughout the day and all other methods in deeper water are just a, a waste of time at this time of year. There's still some fish in that peg. So I'm going to repeat this two or three times now. And with a bit of luck, very soon we'll get a visit from a proper fish. Right, so after several casts, we finally flipping nailed a decent one. So I've had a couple, I had like two or three come into my peg, and I've missed a bit of an indication in the bow wave, so they're moody, but all that is is time of day. And all you have to do is keep plugging away with it, and then finally one will fall for it. And generally from that point, once you start catching an odd better one, which this definitely feels, we've got somewhere to go then. I can keep on topping things up, so not changing things yet, sticking with me at the minute, I'm finding me mushy ones are definitely best. Just because they're holding in and I think the fish that are visiting are quite big in today's case. Whereas if they're a bit smaller, then maybe the micros and uh, normal ground weight would be better. It's a prop on this. But what I'm not tempted to do just yet, being time of day if anything, like we're filming this and we're on what? What we're on about half 12, 12 o'clock. So don't expect to catch loads and loads of fish at this time of day, especially with how it is. I mean, red hot, really bright. They're not going to want to have a feed yet. So just catching all that I can, like making sure that the trap that I've got set is small enough for the fish to fall for it. Me to be able to catch one. <laughs> He's a proper JK. I like that. I'm going to catch my fish rather than overloading my peg with loads and loads and loads of bait. And then in turn, when I do get that visit, the fish has got too much bait, too much choice, and I might not get a, get a bite as a result. So as you can see, they are beyond well worth waiting for. For Old Dwarf, that's a big half fish out for, especially for this lake as well. That's a lot of F1s. If I were to wade through fishing maggots or doing something else, catching little fish, then it's going to take a hell of a long time for me to catch a, that sort of weight of fish. Do you know what I mean? That is a phenomenal example and very well behaved, I must add, as well. I have a mudline fish, I mean, absolute perfect. What's he? He might be eight pound him, seven pound, isn't he? So lovely, lovely example. And hopefully we can go from there and get a few more visits and catch a few more of them with a bit of luck now. So on to the next day, repeat. 
and then I'm going to come back to you in a minute when I feel, or in a little bit, when I feel like it's time to change and then I'll talk about big potting and what I'm trying to achieve when I add a load of bait into my bag. But for now, I'm going to plod on with this, try and catch a couple more, be nice and patient, and hopefully catch another great big wobbly one like that one. Right, so it's been a tricky half hour to be fair, and I've only caught very small fish and a couple more little green ones, which are lovely to catch, but timing more than anything. I mean, it's definitely a, oh, that's no good when it falls out. Definitely a tricky day. I mean, with this sort of weather, they don't want to eat, and it's always going to be about that last period, which, say, it's how it is. What I should actually be doing today is mugging a load and then doing this, but that aside, that's not what video's about. But what I've just done is Probably about 10 minutes ago, I gave it a big pot. And by big pot, I mean not loads and loads. In fact, let me get rid of that. I gave it a decent helping. In that what I've put in is just a little smidge of me mushy stuff, but a decent big pot of the, the cloudy stuff, yeah? So I've put pretty much, what we're gonna say, two thirds, yeah, nearly a full big pot, nearly 150 mil, to try and attract some carp in. Yeah, but this is mainly the cloudy stuff to begin with, because I want to be able to feed a lot of bait let me put that back in there to draw them in without giving them too much to feed on so loads and loads of bait now that i feel i can take the risk because things are slowly starting to happen i can put a little bit more bait in and hopefully try and get some carp and my peg appears to slowly be changing what i'm just seeing now that i haven't been seeing yet today is a bit of mud coming up so finally they're just staring that bottom up a little bit and there's definitely some bigger fish coming into my peg so I'm going to go nice and selective again, back on my sweet corn, because there is still quite a few numbers of little ones in my peg. And I'm just going to feed little nuggets of my mushy stuff. So not a lot. I've only just put a big pot in very shortly, or very recently. And I don't think for a second that'll have all been cleared out. So there's one just left on the edge as well then. We're now going to have a go over a big pot so when timing is right and if it doesn't work straight away yeah i'm not putting another one in yet so the last thing i want to do is keep on big potting big potting big potting all i'm going to do is mess my peg up then and it'll never kick in so it's about timing of putting that big pot into trying to track carp the bigger fish late on so i've ticked over catching the small fish that i can fishing in the way that i've been doing for the video definitely not the right way ah, that might have been a proper bite then as well and now I can start forcing my peg a bit and really, really looking to increase my weight once them bigger fish start feeding. I mean, we caught that one. I'm not going to call it an accidental one, the early visitor before we caught a big one. So I've had one more of them coming to me peg as well. There we go. And all of a sudden things get better. So not the big one, but again, decent fish. This might be an F1, something proper. But this is what I'm on about. When the timing comes, that's the time I need to start pushing things. You know, a bit better. Increase that bait so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera now, but it's just starting to stay up. The colour's changing as well. So at that point, that's where I need to get big pot and keep trying to attract them in. So what I'll do now is sort of catch one or two fish with a little pot, see what fish I catch. If they're those fish, great. If I think that I'm falling behind a bit more because people are catching bigger ones, I might start introducing a big pot every, probably not every fish, maybe second, maybe every third fish, just to really push that peg. But think about what I'm feeding. That is the key thing that I'm on about with this video, is that with the baits that you put in, even though it is one type of bait, I mean, I've got my micro pellets or my ground bait, you need to think about the versatility of your bait and feeding it in different consistencies different consistencies different amounts and think about what those baits are doing when you put them in your peg and if i put a big stodgy clump in it's going to stay there if i'm going to put a nice light one in it's going to disperse but attract loads of fish and by thinking about it a little bit more depth with that ground bait that makes it a bit easier to catch those fish that are now becoming very very accustomed to feeding in that way and can be right tricky to catch so i'm going to carry on catch a few more hope you lot enjoyed that and we'll catch up with you all very very soon